So have you ever wanted to take something from the real world and turn it into something digital? That is what we're gonna do in this video with a bunch of pictures and photogrammetry. So I'm currently working on a project where I need to build something that's gonna go around something in real life. So I need to take dimensions from this wagon, which you can't really see, this wagon right here. So I started to model this in Fusion 360, but it was gonna take a while and I really didn't wanna get into all the details. But then I saw some really cool tutorials where people would take either video or pictures of an object in the real world, throw them in the computer, do a bunch of magic, and then out would pop a 3D model that could be like an SDL, really a mesh that you could bring into any program that you wanted to do. So that is actually what we're going to do in this video. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take a bunch of pictures of the sky. I'm gonna walk around it, take it at different angles. So I could use my phone, but I really wanna use the camera to get the highest quality pictures possible. And I can't really record and take the pictures. So let's do a dramatic reenactment. All right, so we're at the computer and I just imported all of my images. Um, they came in as raw images and for the uh, photogrammetry, I don't know what the plural is. For the software, you actually have to have them either as JPEGs or a TIFF or a PNG. So uh, in my case, I just brought them into uh, a converter. I'm using Permute on a Mac and you just drag it in. What's nice is I can batch because this is like 100. From there, we're gonna bring it into our photogrammetry software. Now, a lot of people use Meshroom. So you guys can see it right here. Uh, if you're familiar with Blender or Maya, it's kind of got this node-based workflow. The only problem is it only runs on Mac. No official Mac OS release. Uh, I came across uh, Metashape. Um, there's a 30 day free trial, that's what I'm trying out. There's some free solutions, I'll include this down below if you wanna check it out. But I think for the most part, all of these are gonna do roughly the same thing. So I'm not super familiar with, I'm just using their general tutorial, which is linked down below. Um, but there's kind of a few different steps. So you can see kind of the workflow right here. Uh, first, we're going to add photos. Then we're going to align the photos. We're gonna build a dense cloud, then a mesh, then a texture. Then I have no idea what the other stuff is, and then we will export it. So let's go ahead and bring in our photos. I'm gonna add these as a folder, and I don't know what a dynamic scene is. 40. All right, so we want a single camera and hit, okay. All right, so they are all in there. So I can click photos. So there are all of my pictures. Go up to workflow and I'm gonna go align photos. All right, so I'm just using their settings that they have suggested and I'm gonna hit, okay. So this actually takes a good amount of time to run all the way through. So I am going to skip to the very end of each of these steps so then we can get to our final model. All right, so we ran all the calculations. I actually didn't record it because it was taking forever. So I'm gonna kind of walk through the process and what it all looked like here at the very end. So this is actually the final model you can see. Um, it's pretty cool because it's got the texture on top of it. Um, if we rotate this around, you can see that it is fully 3D and uh, it is pretty crazy. Now, this wasn't the best, and I think there's some things I can do to kind of refine how this calculated. Obviously, you can see there's some um, holes in it, and then it's got some of this weird stuff here at the bottom because I didn't really take that many great pictures um, of the bottom of the model. So kind of going back through the process again, the first step was uh, we align the photos and this is what it gives you once you align those photos. But then especially once you go and you create a dense cloud, so this is this next one, then you really start to see what you're working with. And I kind of redefined this boundary box right here. So I made it a lot smaller because I don't need all the surrounding information calculations. And then from there, um, then you can see your solid model, which is this guy. So this is the STL that you could export. So again, that would be building the mesh. And then finally build the texture. And that winds up giving you something like this, which is our final piece. So this is great, and I could bring this back into another program and kind of work with it uh, to make the model a little bit nicer. But I wanted to try a few other things to see if I could get a better result. So I'm thinking one of the problems with the wagon was that it was black. So I was having a really hard time figuring out where the actual item was versus just empty space. So I thought I'd go with something that is not black. And this is actually something that was a 3D model to begin with, which is a little ironic, but we're gonna go with this TIE Fighter helmet. Also a great Star Wars game, Squadrons just came out, so this kind of works. 
So eventually this thing is going to be black, but right now there is a primer on it. So it's this really good kind of matte gray color. So it's not reflective, which I think was an issue as well with the wagon. You can see that the light catches it pretty well. So let's go ahead and take a bunch of pictures of this and then we're gonna throw it back into the computer to kind of see what the final result was. Okay, so we took all the pictures of the helmet and we brought that back into Metashape Pro and it actually looks pretty sweet. I really love the dense cloud look. Let me see if I can get it to. So again, you can kind of see how that is looking. And then if we jump over to the solid, uh, it's definitely bumpy, so the surface isn't smooth, but it does a really good job. And then throwing the texture on really makes it work. It's pretty, pretty cool. So we're gonna try a few more things from the shop. So we've got impact drill, a woodpecker square, and then last but not least, area I think photogrammetry could be really cool is things where you can't find a 3D model. Like I probably could find a 3D model for this guy. I definitely could find a 3D model for a But this guy, you could obviously make a pumpkin 3D model it, but you can never get this exact shape because it's an organic real life shape. I think this could be a pretty sweet application where you can take things that only exist in the real world, get them digital. So we're gonna take some pictures of all these. Again, all I'm doing is literally just circling this guy, taking pictures at different angles. So we get our final look working pretty well. First was a square and I think I ran some issues with the sun shining, a lot of like light bleeding over. And you can definitely see that um, here at the top. So this actually, the bottom actually looks pretty nice, but here at the top, um, it's getting pretty rough. So if I turn just the model on, you can tell that's uh, pretty not right. But the, the bottom is looking pretty good. And if I kind of come to the photos like this, it was just having a hard time because it was so backlit right here. Maybe it was having a hard time distinguishing the shape. Not really sure, but that was one issue that I ran into. And I think what I'm learning with all of these is uh, you're really gonna have to take your time and kind of figure out the best situation. All right, so we also did a drill kind of in the same setup. It looks pretty good. It was still getting kind of wonky at the top. So if we just look at the model, um, you can see it's fairly clean, but really that black, those black areas, it starts to um, kind of fall apart. And so I would probably need to take uh, different pictures and maybe kind of redo the settings. And again, I'm just kind of learning this software. So I'm sure there's gonna be ways to really dial it in, but I wanna show you guys the potential. But then if we come over to the texture, it looks a little bit better once you throw the texture on top of it. But I wanted to see if I could get a really good example of the potential of what this can do. So I actually went in and I took a ton of pictures of a pumpkin. And you can see the pumpkin result is actually a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. You can see I had it on top of a, a log or actually a stump and um, it pulls in all of that texture. Uh, it looks really cool. And kind of going back through again, you can see this is the kind of the points it makes. And then it makes this dense cloud. And actually if I zoom out because I didn't have it all the way confined, you can see this is what's crazy. Um, you can see like the entire environment that was around it. So this is just my backyard and it's starting to pick up um, like some bushes and stuff that was all around it. But then you can see the model actually looks pretty good. It's not uh, super messed up. There's some uh, kind of goofy stuff happening. There's like a hole right there, especially when it's all black. But then uh, going into the model texture and there we go. That is looking cool. So again, I can go up here, go file and then export and then you can save this as a model. So now that we have all of those models, we can export those out as a mesh. I'm not gonna get super deep into what that looks like in this video, but I just wanna show you kind of a quick example of what that can look like. So I'm actually gonna bring these into um, ZBrush real quick and I'm just gonna come up here and import them. And you can just import an OBJ or an STL um, right in. And you can see there is our pumpkin. Then you can bring in the texture. So it actually has a texture right here that I brought in. Uh, if I just go to import, I'll show you where it's saved. It just saves it as a JPEG. So you can bring those directly in. One thing I had to do a little bit goofy here is I have to flip it vertically uh, and then I get it to work. But this is a fully editable model. So I mean, I can go in here and start doing kind of your normal stuff inside of ZBrush. I could smooth everything out if I wanted. And you can definitely see that if I turn the texture back off what I'm doing. 
So overall, this process is actually really cool. I haven't been able to really dial it in completely. You can definitely see that some of the models were kind of messed up. They had holes and I'd have to fix that later down the road. But I think this is a good kind of first step in your overall process of wanting to get a 3D model that you could potentially print out or use in whatever application, especially things that just don't exist in the digital world, like organic shapes, like the pumpkin, or even like trees all around. Now, if you're interested in seeing kind of the post process of this, so kind of how to clean the model up, how to send it to a 3D printer, let me know down in the comments and I can follow up with another video. So we have a bunch of other projects on the channel that aren't just about the digital world, but we make stuff in real life as well. You can check out some of the cool ones right up there. And until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.